is my screen uh, visible? Yeah, yeah, we can see your screen. Shall we? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mariam Bora. Um, I would like to welcome you all to this past webinar in association with Alavi. We all hope that it will be a wonderful session for you all and you'll get to learn some amazing techniques and strategies that will help you to grow your business using Google Analytics. And I would also like to thank and welcome our two speakers, Mr. Dinesh V and Niroshan Samuel for taking out time and doing this webinar for us. Uh, Dinesh is the co-founder of Alavi application software. Um, he has over 20 years of experience in the IT industry and uh, digital strategy and analytics. And ha he has worked across different regions in the world. He currently has been working with some of the top brands in Pakistan as well. Uh, our second speaker is Niroshan Samuel. He's the head of product and analytics at Alavi. He's known for his expertise in web analytics and measurement, cam uh, measurement capabilities. He has also managed some of the top online campaigns for some of the top global brands, including Google. So thank you guys once again for do, taking our time and doing this webinar for us. Before we start, I would just like to mention two things very quickly that please uh, keep your mics on mute. And if you have any question, leave it in the chat box. So Neil, uh, sorry, Dinesh and Eroshan will take your questions toward the end of the presentation. And before starting, we are just going to have a quick short poll Please make sure that you register your answers. And then over to you, Dinesh and Niroshan. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to, to team up with uh, Paz to do this. And, uh, and it's also great to see some known faces uh, uh, who have registered and taken part in uh, you know, this webinar. So before we uh, kick start, I want to kind of let you know, if you look at the original theme of this webinar was super focused on the clothing and apparel sector. But when we last night analyzed the, uh, the uh, registrations with the past team, we kind of realized there were only one or two companies that belong to this vertical. So uh, uh, what we did was last night, you know, we tirelessly worked and got some slides changed and make, made those slides somewhat uh, universal so that uh, uh, it would be relevant for uh, literally uh, every uh, participant uh, Who's here? Great. So let me start there. So first, let's let's start to understand why Google Analytics so popular, right? Of course, Google Analytics has two variants. One is a free version, and the other one is a paid version. Free version is uh, is used commonly. It, it's very robust. Uh, it, it can literally answer most of the questions that companies uh, uh, in the in the e-commerce uh, domain might want it to answer. Right now, why it became so popular was the data collection is very easy within Google Analytics. Setting up is super easy. It just works out of the box, right? And of course, it comes with certain uh, pre-built reports, which uh, uh, anyone can uh, use to get a very high-level view of the overall health of their digital efforts. Now, that being said, there are a few challenges with Google Analytics. If you look at Google Analytics as a, a platform, it literally captures over 200 plus variables of a single visitor who lands on a website, right? That's a ton of data, right? Now, you need to have the ways and means to analyze this data, and that's, that's one challenge. Also, if you look at the customer's journey, these are constantly evolving, changing, right? Now, if you look at the, especially the pandemic era, People who used to buy online, some of them stopped buying and, and people who never bought online started buying. So if you look at our company's data, uh, it's, it, it's so volatile, so new, it constantly keeps changing, right? So uh, that mapping, that plotting, that is, is a challenge, right? Identifying trends within trends is a challenge, right? Also, the, some of the standard reports that uh, Google Analytics gives you, uh, gives you limited visibility. So you need to actually you need expert knowledge to twist the data to get some insights. And also when you combine AI and data science skills, you, you can do wonders with Google Analytics, right? But, but that skill set is very rare and, and limited. Now for a typical e-commerce company, uh, uh, the, the most popular, the, the older version of Google Analytics GA3 is sufficient. 
Google released uh, a, a new version this year called GA4, which has uh, capabilities to do both mobile and, and uh, web in one place. And the second thing that an e-commerce company should have is a feature called NRC e-commerce. It lets you track conversion, push conversion data, and so on. And the second thing is that companies should enable demographic data tagging. By doing that, you know, Google can look at a visitor and predict their, their, their age category so that you can pull uh, uh, insight based on certain demographic variables. And also, uh, uh, it's great if you can configure your Google Analytics setup to, to get offline data, maybe pumping data from CRM. Right? So for example, if you take a typical e-commerce store, when you get uh, cancellations, right? Now, if you can put, push the cancellation data back in, the data that that is stored within Google Lens will be very well refined rather than, you know, non-converted data. You only have converted data within your Google Analytics setup. Now, Google Analytics on its own won't perform, right? I think you need to mix and match your domain knowledge in the industry. Uh, if you can bring in data science and some level of automation, uh, then that's when you would be, able, that's where when you will be able to get the maximum power out of your Google Analytics setup so that you can customize it in such a way that, that you get reports, insights that are very specific to your company, your domain. And uh, also that being said, you know, go looking at data in a siloed fashion is not optimal. As I said before, you know, Google Analytics captures multiple data sets, right? From the websites, mobile, even your off-site data, and then if there are any additional metrics that you measure on the outside, if you can pump all that in, combine it, then you will get a really good 360 view of your audience. That, that needs to be done uh, to get uh, some good insights out of your uh, Google Analytics setup. Now, uh, uh, Google Analytics gives you a lot of quantitative data, right? For data to be more conclusive, you need to ideally uh, mix and match or, or bring both quantitative and qualitative data, right, uh, to, to, to gain really good insights. See, see quantitative data tells you, see, what, what happened. It will never tell you why it happened. So you need to have some qualitative workflows and, and you need to mix and match them uh, to find great insights. So one of the, the popular workflows that's used in the industry is something called Analytics Trinity. It's a very simple framework. So my, my colleague uh, Niroshan would, uh, uh, would, would take you through that slide. Yeah, so uh, Google Analytics tells us what, uh, what happened with data and also we need to uh, look at what is the outcome whether because each behavior need to link into the outcome. Outcome is the one pillar of this analytics trinity. And also uh, one, one, once we identify the outcome, we need to check uh, why it happened. For that, we need to uh, do experience analysis. Experience analysis comes with we do survey, focus groups, interviews, and we looked at the chats and that's how actually we identify the reason behind this specific behavior. So in this example, actually we looked at four card dropout rate for one uh, customer. And uh, uh, we found that face was combo category. The card dropout rate is really high and compared to others. So we looked at uh, data by segmenting age level, gender level, persona level to identify is there any reason. And we looked at the different pricing, but we couldn't find a reason from Google Analytics because it tells us what happened. And then actually we uh, uh, set up video views uh, recording on the website and we looked at whether there's a usability issue related to this Facebook combo, but we couldn't find that. Then we thought that, okay, we need to go to identify qualitative review. And actually we uh, did a survey with customers, people who drop out from the cart and also people who haven't dropped out from the cart. So we wanted to identify what is the reason behind them. And um, from the survey, we realized that the perception of quality is low because the, uh, that product page didn't have proper information about the product safety. So people thought that this quality of this product is really low. So that's why the card report rates went really high. Then actually we reworked the landing page to improve the perception of product quality, then actually uh, it came to normal. So let's look at how to uh, uncover insights from both. So we use a very simple framework combined with uh, four popular methods. So we'll take you through those uh, in the upcoming slides. 
So if you take a typical e-commerce store, what we believe is there are only three metrics that matter for growth. One is growing your customers. Second is improving average order value. Third is working on your retention, right? If you improve any one of these variables, uh, uh, you will do well, right? Say, for example, if you want to fast track growth, how should you look at these variables, right? Now, if you take these three variables and if you multiply, right, they compound. For example, what I mean by that is, if you look at your data and if you focus on just getting a mere 30% uplift in terms of retention, uh, a 30% uh, um, uplift in terms of average order value and 30% in terms of acquisition, this can potentially set you for 2x growth, right? So when we try to take one element and try to double it, it's always difficult. But so what we say is when you look at the analytics data, look at these three verticals, see where and where you could get a 30% uplift, bring those in, combine them, and eventually you can potentially uh, get to a, a, a 2x uh, growth. And uh, in terms of uncovering those insights, I mentioned there are four methods. One is called segmentation. Second is commonalities. Third is looking at funnels. And, and the fourth one is cohorts. So let's look at, uh, and also uh, the key thing is that once you use these four techniques, they should uh, translate into some actionable insights, right? So you should be able to action, take those insights in terms of your campaigns, products, websites, and the, the operations too. Now, what, what is a good insight, right? Say, for example, if you come up with an insight, that insight should be something like we found uh, insight X by doing a Y analysis and which recommends a Z action. So for example, uh, 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 the analytics guru Avinash gives a really good example, uh, uh, a good statement which says, if you undertake that action, you will add 12 million to the bottom line at the cost of 1.7 million. Sorry. So, when you find an insight that has to be actionable and that also should be able to translate into revenue or, or, or the preferred outcome that, that uh, uh, your company is uh, um, expecting. So, next, next, let's look at the, the first component segmentation in detail, Anirushan. Yeah, so uh, the first analysis technique is that you need to uh, segment, right? So basically it could be a landing page report from analytics, could be a channel campaign report. You need to segment and see what are the profitable segments and what are the unprofitable segments. So once you identify that, then you can take action based on that. For example, if you identify profitable segment, you can uh, launch dedicated campaign, expand and replicate. So for example, if you identify a uh, high conversion rate landing page, you can learn from that. You can create more landing page similar to that. And if you find unprofitable segment, it could be an age group, then you need to uh, see whether you can improve that and you can improve your campaigns for them. Or otherwise, if you can't improve that unprofitable segment, you can simply stop that. So we'll take you through some simple examples. And uh, here you can see uh, this the segmentation based on the basic segmentation you can do based on uh, a device level, desktop, tablet, and mobile, here you can see the mobile conversion rates are really low. So that if you're running a campaign, basically what you can do, uh, you can uh, allocate more budget towards the desktop. And also you need to look at why this mobile conversion rate is low and check the user experience with the mobile uh, uh, the website, then you should be able to improve that. And also similarly, uh, uh, this is the device, uh, uh, the brow brow browser and the browser version. In this example, actually this is a real example, we found conversion rate across uh, the di different browsers at the browser version. So we identify the some of the, the version of Internet Explorer giving really high conversion rate. You can look at the second column where the Internet Explorer browser version is 11 and the conversion rate is 3.23, which is really high. One of the reasons actually this customer, their target audience is really all people, all the senior citizens, because of that they are still using the Internet Explorer. So whenever they use Internet Explorer 11 and their conversion rate is high. So this gives us uh, uh, the few key action items to take. One thing is that we can do the remarketing campaign from people who visited from this version and also from Facebook, we can target people specifically using this internet browsers. And also we can go back and look at people are senior citizens are logging through other browsers. What is the reason they are not converting at this rate? So if there's any usability issues to fix. 
then uh, we looked at uh, screen uh, uh, the resolution with the conversion rate because sometimes uh, we found that the, depending on the product screen resolution matter if it is a luxury product they need to see it on a desktop where compared to the mobile because they need to see it in more detail and we found that certain resolutions are really high and giving uh, better results for this customer actually uh, uh, the business type is high end luxury retail and by identifying this so we actually improved the gave recommendation to the website how to show detail view of the product when uh, the low, uh, smaller screens and also uh, improve the load time by implementing webp format webp image format with the website so that actually help them to load uh, image with higher quality quickly in a even uh, in a mobile screen and then uh, what you can do you can look at the landing page conversion rate and the landing page let's say if you looked at the landing page conver conversion rate in a default window you won't get any actionable inside there so what you have to do look at the high conversion rate page look at the low conversion rate page and try to understand why this high conversion rate page are converting better compared to others whether it's a product or landing page quality page load time or with the the audience or with the channel so if you identify that then definitely you can replicate this learning across other landing page as well so one of the common uh, insight we find across all the customers when we looked at the uh, the high converting pages there's a clear call to action on those landing pages so if you look at the low uh, the conversion rate pages they don't have a clear uh, isolated call to action so that that one of the common reason where the landing page conversion rate different one to other So next, next look at this next technique called commonalities, right? Let's do a simple uh, uh, exercise. It's fun. Now I'm sure most of you are uh, uh, Game of Thrones fans. Now let's assume that I give you the data set of, of all these characters, their weight and their food consumption patterns, right? And then my goal is to reduce my weight, right? Now if that is a scenario, right? How can you use this data to help me lose weight, right? Now, uh, so the, the ter key term is commonalities. So when you look at data, you should be able to find certain segments and certain common elements. So in this case, if you take the entire data set and if you break them into the ideal weight and then the overweight category. Now you've broken these two segments, right? Now, what thereafter what you could do is you can go deep into these segments to understand the variables within these two, two, two or, or segments. Now, when you do that, and if you guys are fans of uh, uh, GOT, you know all these characters that we previously looked at, they all consume a lot of wine. So our simple hypothesis is that people who consume wine are more likely to maintain the way, right? So actionable insight is, is drink more wine. So on a serious note, we'll, we'll show you some uh, examples where it has worked really well. And, and one such example is uh, Airbnb. Airbnb used this simple commonalities principle uh, to solve one challenge. They wanted to improve the room nights per customer. The first thing that they did was, you know, they looked at the properties with low room nights per customer versus properties with high room nights per customer. They started digging into all the variables that they knew, right? So one thing that they found out was, Properties with higher number of room nights per customer had high quality images. So that's that's the insight that they got. So what they did was, they actually, in 2009, they launched in 2008. In 2009, they found this. They hired photographers at their cost and then sent to certain strategic locations uh, uh, where they felt the properties would sell like hotcakes. They, were, they sent these people to photograph. They took those professional uh, photographs and uploaded into those customer properties. When they did that, you know, they saw a massive growth. They actually experienced uh, exponential growth. This is such a simple exercise, but this can actually uh, uh, help you find nuggets of data which can actually literally change the face of your business. The next is the funnel analysis, right? So now the, what the funnel analysis does is you know, 
look at the bottlenecks, look at the customer's journey, see where people are falling off, right? And, and once you start digging deep into those, those uh, uh, bottlenecks, you'll be able to uncover uh, uh, opportunities to experiment and then, you know, uh, improve. Yeah, so the fourth, uh, the, uh, the analysis tactic is to do the cohort analysis. And Google Analytics also, uh, you can look at the cohort analysis. Uh, there's a separate tab for that. So if I explain it in a simple term, first you need to identify different user groups. So here you can see the 2018, there's, there are two user groups. One user group don't smoke and the other user group is they are smoking, right? So in a cohort analysis, we identify this user group and measure performance over the years. So first month, second month, first year, second year, over the period, and we look at how the performance. So in this case, there's no performance. Basically, measure the impact over the time. So how their lungs working, whether they are falling sick, and what are the, the issues with this. So we are measuring uh, impact for different user groups. So the same thing you can do for your, your brand as well. You can segment or identify multiple user groups. And you can look at how they are purchasing from you continuously, whether they are purchasing from continuously, whether they are purchasing a higher order value product over the time, so that you can look at. So identifying this, actually it helps you to do the acquisition, right? So if you identify very profitable user group and profitable over the times, and which means their lifetime value is high, so that you can refine your acquisition strategy to bring more people similar to this cohort. And uh, now actually we looked at uh, what are the analysis techniques, what are the data points we can look at. And once you did the analysis, then we can, uh, you can use this framework to uh, implement into your platform or you can actually need to know campaign landing page or product. And for example, the first analysis we found, this is a sample analysis we did, we found that if product page has three to five images, their conversion rates are high. That is the first step. We identified that analysis. And the second step, we need to come up with the hypothesis. Hypothesis, we say that we assume that three to five product images actually increase the add to cart. And then as a third step, we need to uh, design the variation. So we need to um, create various, uh, the product pages with three to five images to test out with the original version. And then we can, as a fourth step, we can launch the A-B test with Google Optimize. Google Optimize is a free, uh, free uh, version so that you can launch many A-B tests there. And the fifth step, we need to monitor how the performance, how the new variation with the original one, how these performing and what the conversion rate revenue. And the sixth step, we can evaluate the performance, whether actually our hypothesis is correct or uh, the variation gave more revenue and the conversion rates are higher. We can look at in high level. And also you can go deeper and you can segment the performance by uh, country, geography, multiple persona and see how this experiment affected different user group for the different seg segments. And then uh, once you have multiple experiment lineup and also once you have multiple winning experiment, then to implement into website, it takes time, right? So then you have to map all the, uh, the actionable insight, effort versus impact. So if the effort is low and the impact is high, you can definitely go and implement that because it's an easy way. For example, let's say you need to implement a product recommendation in engine similar to Amazon, right? It might take millions of money and a lot of effort to do that, that uh, recommendation in engine with that capability. And let's say you found some insight on the shopping cart, uh, you need to remove this uh, drop down so that it might improve revenue. So it's a like, small effort, but it also uh, bring you a uplift around more than 30% uplift. So then you need to prioritize that. So use this framework to prioritize your experiment or the implementation based on effort and impact. So let's look, look at a few ways of demystifying the customer journey. So historically, you know, we used to uh, look at the customer journey in a very linear fashion, but you know, or later, you know, research firms like McKinsey, they said, you know, customer journey is not linear, it's circular. And, and so many, there are so many iterations that are there out there. But in, in, in simple terms, if you see today, you know, it's very complex, right? And, and this is what we call as messy in the middle, right? You have to untangle this mess to identify insights and trends to uh, um, scale. And, and Google Analytics uh, has certain... Uh, um, uh, 
reports that you can actually pull out to untangle this mess. Yeah, here actually we can uh, look at the, the simple uh, customer journey report. So if you implemented enhanced e-commerce, you can see this report on your analytics platform. So even though the complex customer journey, you can start with here, right? So here it will show you all session and how many of them view the product page out of the, how many of them added to cart and how many of them purchased. So in this, uh, the example, you can see the dropout rates are really high. People who visited the product page and 89.85% drop before they move to the add to cart. So basically this is the highest dropout during this funnel. So that we need to prioritize the optimization here. So if we can fix this, the gain is really high. And then next slide, we actually uh, are looking at how to do this analysis. So in the, we identify that people are moving from product page to add to cart is really low. So we can segment that by product category. And the good example is that we uh, categorize for uh, fashion and apparel company. And we found that unstitched collection dropout rates are really high. Then we found that the, the, the perception about the material quality is low by using a survey. And the second uh, analysis, you can look at the product attribute. In general, if the product prices are high, the card adding to card are low from the product page to the card. So similarly, you can look at the product size, product color, product material, um, and the product brand. So everything you can look at and see where the problem is. And the third, uh, we can look at the product page and look at what are the product page actually causing this high dropout rate from product page to add to cart. And we found that if you have low quality images or limited images in the product page and the dropout rates are really high so that you can rectify and work on that. The final analysis you can do um, whether people are navigated to other pages from the product pages, what are the pages they navigated to, uh, navigated to before they move to the add to cart. And we found that if people move to uh, the exchange policy, the conversion rate drops. Right? And uh, then we have to work on that. Let's say in the other uh, the example is if people move to exchange policy, conversion rates are high, then you need to show the exchange policy in the product page. If not, you have to remove it because it's kind of distracting the user. And uh, yeah, so you can use these techniques to uh, or the segmentation to analyze the reason behind the, the drop off rate. And if we actually are thinking about the customer journey, it's a bit complex than the simple funnel we looked at earlier. So you, basically people are coming from multiple channels. There are multiple persona and people can enter into the website and they can move into the site search or product page, category page. Then they will go to multiple category page. They will look at multiple products, subcategories. So this is really a complex customer journey for e-commerce businesses. So what you have to do, at least map what are the main customer journey using analytics, you can easily do that. And map dropout rate for each step. For example, if you feel that people are went to site search dropping off, dropout rate is high, basically we can assume that site search is not working, right? And either the site search is not giving the proper results as customer want. So you can rectify that. So map the customer journey for entire website and map the dropout rate and map it over the time, whether it's improved compared to la last month, this month. And if there's a problem, then you can do this, uh, go deep dive, and then you can analyze as we discussed using the product, product, uh, uh, the features, the landing pages, and the, uh, and the persona, and then you can look at where the problem is. And also you keep in mind, this dropout rate might differ based on the channel and the persona as well. You need to check based on the persona and channel as well to identify the drop off rate. Yeah. So uh, this is the common uh, path when, when someone purchases uh, the product, right? Uh, in e-commerce, sometimes people land into the category page and this is a fashion and apparel example. We looked at the one customer journey, how they purchased. And if they went to the size chart, we saw a 13% uplift in the conversion rate. And if they went to the refund policy, we saw 27% drop in the conversion rate. Um, so that actually, when we optimize the category page, we want to show the size charts upfront because we need people to go to size chart because we know that they go to size chart, 
uh, the conversion rate goes up. And also we need to rework the refund policy and give less prominence to re refund policy because if people go there, they confuse and the conversion rates drop. So similarly, you can work on like multiple customer journeys similar to this, identify what are the influential parts and what are the actually pages of the section dragging the conversion down, then you can optimize the customer journey based on that. And um, similar to the, uh, the influential part, there are influential behavior you can identify because a uh, simple example is that if someone visited your website for first time, they're not going to purchase anything from you, right? They might need multiple session to purchase. Sometimes they need multiple days to complete purchase so that we need to identify what are the behavior actually we can uh, rely on actually predict the final purchase because final purchase is, is a macro conversion. We need to identify what are the micro conversion, what are the engagement metric or the behavior which can predict the conversion. So in this example, e-commerce commonly we found that if someone uh, use site search and view two products, their conversion rates are probably high. They are not going to convert in the first session, but their probability of converting them in the future sessions are high. And the second scenario is that if someone visited three times to the website, their conversion rate also high. And the third scenario, if someone view four product uh, or four or more products, their also conversion rate probability is high. And the third scenario, if visited homepage via organic search, they are also conversion rate probability high. And what some action item we can take, if we know that these user groups are uh, probable to convert so that we can target them with very uh, the, uh, uh, targeted remarketing campaign because it, these are more profitable to target than remarketing the entire site visitors. And also we can use this behavior to optimize website because we know that if someone visited the website as a new user, they are not going to purchase immediately. They are going to use these actions. So we need to facilitate that. For example, if, uh, for, if someone use site search and view two product means we need to optimize the site search properly, give proper uh, product recommendation for them. And uh, uh, the third the third scenario is we for more product. If someone looking at the product, we, they, they should be able to give similar product to look at quickly, right? So similarly, we can uh, optimize the website as well. And the other thing is that we can optimize the top funnel to bring more quality users. In the ne next slide, um, basically the common uh, problem we have if people want to e-commerce website, want to drive tra quality traffic to the website. So basically the first scenario is that they start with uh, traffic objective campaign to the website through Facebook. The problem with Facebook will try to bring visitors at a lower cost. The problem there, uh, people are getting low quality traffic and bounce rates are high. People are not engaging, they are not purchasing. It's a real problem. Then the second scenario, they would try they uh, optimize traffic campaign for purchase objective. So we'll inform set up in, in Facebook saying I need purchases but they are expecting traffic. In that case, since Facebook trying to bring more purchasers, uh, it will limit the number of people visiting the website because the Facebook will try to bring more people who are ready to buy so that you are not getting the enough traffic. So as a solution, if you identify profitable uh, behavior, then you can, let's say if someone you site search, is it a profitable behavior for you? Then you can optimize your traffic campaign for you site search usage. Basically you can set up an event uh, from Facebook to um, represent that event, then you can tell Facebook, okay, I need people similar to who are engaged with the site search. It will give more uh, relevant users to you. And also it will make sure that they will purchase in the coming days. And when you uh, identify the common behavior, profitable behavior, you need to look at three elements. First one is the volume. So behavior, let's say, if uh, page visit is an event. So you need to look at how many pages it, it's a five, 10. And if you look at add product to the cart, how many product they added two, 10, five, so you need to look at the volume and you need to look, look at variety of events. So product page view, it could be adding to cart, user persona, channel they came, geography, everything you have to look at with different variations. And the third one is the velocity. Also, you have to look at whether this behavior, let's say for example, if someone looked at uh, four product within first session or within, whether it's within first seven days or with, whether it's within one month. So you need to uh, bind the uh, time variable also to that. 
yeah, the, the one limitation is that sometimes say Google Analytics has more than uh, 200 variables. And if you combine it with time frame, it can bring more combination to the analysis. If you're doing manually, let's say if you're doing five variable and combine with time, then it will give you more than thousand combination. And also you can't do any predictability because you will see manually what are the combination. For example, you will see age between 20 or 34, uh, how many page visit, right? The two variable uh, you will see manually, there's no predictability. You will see what happened historically, right? But if you use an algorithm or AI or machine learning platform, what you can, you can calculate combination faster because Google Analytics has 200 more variables. You can uh, compute more than million uh, combination in, within a short time. And also it helps you to predict. It's a certain, uh, uh, the segment is working for you. And the, this algorithm can tell you, okay, whether this will work for next week or next month, next coming year. That is the advantage by using a, a, a platform with AI and machine learning. So uh, this is a sim simple example. Uh, we had a discussion with the customer and we looked at the return on ad spend from Facebook age 25 to 34. And Jan, it was slightly less than four and Feb three, March six, and April 3. So customer said that we should, shouldn't advertise for this age group because last 30 day, April, they are, it's not profitable for them below the break even ROS. And also they said, uh, looking at the average ROS across the last four months, that's also below the break even point. They don't want to advertise. So actually we uh, uh, put this data into a, a machine learning algorithm and the prediction algorithm. And then actually it found that next month, the ROS is going to go up because of the seasonality based on this trend, right? So actually then it, it actually gave them profitable ROS in the month of May and uh, it generated significant revenue. So this is the one limitation you have if you're pulling data manually and manually looking at it. And the advantage by if you're using a machine learning or AI algorithm, it can actually predict based on the historical data. And the next, uh, the most important element with Google Analytics is you can see time to conversion. And there's a report uh, in Google Analytics, you can take, see how many days it take to convert. And in common uh, scenario is that if customer convert easily within the short time period, they're profitable for us because we don't have to spend money on marketing with three marketing and, and other marketing activity. And also we, any business you will find people are con converting immediately and they, need some days and some might need longer time but we need to identify this user group separately and plan our campaign separately to nurture them and get the proper output from them and this is the simple example this screenshot from google Analytics. this report shows you how many days you need your customer take to convert uh, in the time lag days zero day you got 33 percent of transaction and first day you got two percent so similarly you can calculate so to come up with one number, you need to check how many days it take to uh, convert 80% of the customer. So in this analysis, it take 20 days to convert 80% of the customers, or we can say the time to conversion is 20% for them. We can use uh, this insight uh, in the next slide, uh, we can sh uh, show you the, how we can use this insight. So especially if you're driving traffic to the website from previous analysis, we know that it take 20 days to convert, right? So uh, for example, if you spend money on December, it might take January to see the initial transaction because your customer need 20 days. So what we actually did, initially we started advertising in uh, bringing more users, new users in December. Feb, we have seen the little bit improvement in revenue and the, uh, the website traffic. And continuously we uh, actually uh, uh, spend on top funnel because we know that if you bring users, they need more uh, around one month to convert. So continuously doing that, actually we saw the growth phase in April, it actually gave them the exponential growth. So if, you, if that's the importance of measuring the time to conversion, let's say your time to conversion is three months, then putting money in December, you can't expect the results in December. It might take more than three months to see results. So because of that, it's really important to understand the time to conversion for your new users. And similarly, we, we action this for one of the grocery companies in Pakistan. This is the actual results in 2021. We double their revenue within three to four months. 
so actually we use that and but one thing you need to in mind first two months you need to be patient because your time to conversion is really high you will see lower return on ad spend in top funnel campaign mid funnel campaign also lower audience until it grows but from third month onward you will see sudden growth and immediate growth actually they double their revenue within this short time period And um, Google Analytics has a other report called a days to transaction. The difference here is that you can look at by campaign. And also you can look at by uh, the funnel down, uh, top funnel people, how many days they need to transact, mid funnel people or the remarketing campaign, how many days they need to transact. By looking at this info, then uh, we can actually uh, optimize our Facebook campaign. Let's say a uh, time to transaction is for Facebook campaign less than seven days then basically you can rely on Facebook optimization because Facebook algorithm looks at last seven days transaction and optimize based on that. But the thing is, uh, you need to actually should know what is the time to transaction to uh, optimize campaign uh, for your manual optimization. Let's say time to transaction is five days, then you can't post the campaign within two days because the, all the transaction, 80% of the transaction to accumulate 80% of the transaction, it needs five days. So you need to wait five days before you post a campaign based on the performance and the second scenario is that let's say you are uh, 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 the customers take more than seven days to transact then you can't actually rely on facebook algorithm because facebook can look at only last seven days and for example if uh, uh, the common uh, the scenario is that in e-commerce if you're selling tv they need at least two to three weeks before they purchase complete the purchase so that for example if you do a campaign on Facebook, Facebook won't see that transaction, right? Because of that, Facebook will uh, reduce the spend on that ad set or the audience. It will say, okay, this campaign is not profitable if you look at the Facebook. But actually, people need more time. One solution is that you can actually go to Google Analytics, look at for this Facebook campaign, <clears throat> what is the revenue accumulated after the seven days. If it is profitable, you can keep that. And the second, uh, uh, the solution is that uh, without optimizing the final, final purchase, because final purchase take three days, find a behavior per people can do within seven days. Let's take the same example. If you're selling TV, check if they looked at, if they added to the cart, uh, the TV within the first seven days, what is the conversion rate? If the conversion is going to go high and then optimize your campaign for add, added to cart which Facebook can see that data within seven days and also which behavior will predict the few actual purchase as well. And the next, next actually, second. yeah, sorry. sorry. And uh, we, uh, so far we looked at the customer journey and how to optimize customer journey, including time to conversion. Now uh, we are going to the section, the product insights, how to discover product insights through uh, analytics. And the, one of the common behavior from customer, if they landed into a product, they don't just purchase that product, right? They go to product A, they go to product B, and they go to product C. Finally, they ended up buying product D. So we need to map this behavior from, so Facebook doesn't allow us to map this behavior. Actually, uh, Google Analytics, we can see this behavior because we need to identify this behavior. It's really important because let's say in Facebook, you uh, advertise the landing page, and you think that, okay, transaction happening for the product you advertise. But when you look at analytics, you advertise for a separate product, people who are coming from that campaign purchase actual product D. That's what not you advertise, right? So Facebook, you can't see this different. Because of that, what two action items you can take by looking at this report, what you can do, you can go and change the creative to suitable as to the product D, because that's the most selling product in this campaign. And if you want to sell the <clears throat> landing product actually, then you have to try a different audience. So this is really important to identify uh, the, uh, the what product actually sells with the, each campaign. And uh, because of this behavior, because of my people are checking multiple products and their purchase behavior influence with multiple products, we can use the price decoy theory. In this example, in the first scenario, you can see there are two products, first product $21, and second perfume bottle $32. Most people are going to buy the $21 product because they feel that it's much cheaper than the $32 product. So in psychological, uh, what product decoy theory said that if you have a three product shown in the right side panel, 
and we introduce a new product with the $52, right? Then most people going to buy $32 product. So that is the buyer behavior. We can use the same theory to show product to the customers within the customer journey. And if you looked at the uh, the customer, how people evaluate product, so they landed into this blue uh, dress, right? Then they will uh, look at the product A and product B and product C, they purchase, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the another product. But if they looked at the product A, their conversion rate goes up. And if they looked at the product B, their conversion rate goes up. Probably it could be the product B also with the same design and but the lower price so that they confuse and they left the website. Right. So we need to understand through the customer journey, what is the product we want to sell? What are the other products actually help in this conversion or the help in this customer journey? We can identify this from analytics. And if you identify this, then we can actually action it on Facebook. So Facebook uh, uh, carousel ads, we can show up to 10 products. So let's say first two, two are the products you want to uh, uh, sell, view down website then we can uh, the rest of the product are influential product we know that if people weave this product together chances are buying first two products are high so that we can plan the carousel at to add the influence product as well then uh, the next analysis we want to show you the product basket analysis this is actually happening like from the last century from the offline store we need we can do it in the online store as well in this example, this user actually uh, wanted to buy a phone and phone cover, right? Here he uh, went to the phone landing page and purchased that. Now he want to buy a phone cover, but there's no recommendation. He need to go back to the website, search for phone cover and phone cover related to this brand and find it, then sort it. It's a little extra effort he need to do, but the common case is that they buy the phone and then go away. So what we can do using analysis and Google Analytics, we can look at what are the common products they bought in the order? Because if you look at the product, uh, uh, the section on analytics, you can check the order IDs and the product, what are the product they bought together. And simple, you can do a calculation saying of, of people who bought phone, how many people actually bought the phone cover? Here is 25%. People who bought phone, 21% bought car chargers. People who bought phone, 19% bought the power bank. So you can do this rule-based analysis identify what are the product groups they are buying together so that we can use that for our campaigns on the website. And if we go beyond this, uh, the rule-based analysis, actually there is a theory or a statistical theory behind that. And uh, here it explains, let's say you have thousand customers, support level will see uh, how many actually out of thousand customers, how many bought this product together, which is out of thousand, 50 customers bought this together, which means support level is 5%. And then the second variable it look at out of phone buyers, what is the percentage bought uh, phone covers, it, which is the confidence 25%. Actually, if you use a statistical model, it look at support level and confidence level. Based on that, it will give product group with the statistical significance. It's more accurate than the rule base because it has a confidence level than the rule base, the insight. And uh, these are the action item you can take uh, based on the product basket analysis. One thing is that you can come up with the promote bundle of us because you know that phone and phone covers are selling together. You can bundle that and sell that because it's more convenient customer to buy it together than researching and finding it separately. And then you can optimize your website with the product recommendation. And also in a Facebook, when you advertise carousel, you can show one uh, image with the phone, other image with the phone cover, similar product, they car charger and the, all the product. So that <coughs> conversion rate will be higher. And also you can use the remarketing. For example, if someone purchase uh, the phone, then you can remark remarket them with the phone cover. You can send an SMS, you can send an email to them so that the repeat purchases will be higher. And the next analysis we want to show you the retention analysis. This also you can simply do using Google Analytics. And you need to check uh, what are the product they looked at and user behavior. And to identify uh, retention, basically retention means we need to look at, um, uh, for e-commerce brand, uh, we need to look at if some new customer, how many purchases they are going to do within next 12 months or next two years, three years. So if we can map that, we can actually plan the acquisition campaign according to that. 
So first we can look at based on the retention based on the product. For example, if someone purchases product A, how many times they are going to purchase within a year? If someone purchases product B, how many times they are going to purchase within a year? And we did this analysis for many customers. So one of the example is that fashion and apparel. If they purchase uh, the Excel product, their retention is high. Normally in uh, Asian countries, including Pakistan, in apparel, on average, new customer purchase four times a year in one brand. So if someone purchase the Excel product, they tend to purchase six, seven items a year. So it's a 50% lifetime value increase within a year for this customer. And also grocery company, we found that if they purchase milk powder packer within their first order, they are tend to purchase every month, not only milk packets, other products also. So that if you identify this, uh, the retention by product, one action item you can take, you can promote this product for acquisition. And also let's say milk powder packet, you can give a discount because you know that if you give a discount at first purchase, they are going to purchase 12 times a month. So it's more profitable so that you need to give that first experience with the milk powder packet. And the second scenario is that you need to identify user behavior. What are the user behavior helping the retention? So one uh, e electronic e-commerce company, we found that if someone purchased two products within their first month, they are going to purchase three or four times in a year. In an e-commerce, normally uh, the retention is they a new customer purchase one to two product within a year. That's the average. But if they purchase two product within first month, they are tend to purchase three to four product within the rest of the 11 months. So that what you can do if someone purchase within one one product one month, then you can remark to them within the 30 days and give some discount within 30 days to second purchase. So push them to purchase the second product within the first month. It will help you to get more uh, improved retention and more profitable customer. And uh, other uh, the, the report you can look at, this is the product report. Uh, product uh, purchase report you can uh, add uh, you can look at uh, product purchase through uh, organic channels and the paid traffic you can see here highlighted the ad we added two advanced segment uh, one advancing people who purchase from uh, paid traffic and one advancing people who purchase from organic traffic so by looking at this report you can identify what are the product selling organically what are the products selling through paid channels and the next slide uh, then we can actually calculate uh, uh, the ratio in this example phone cover paid sales to organic sales percentage is 13 percent which means uh, 87 people bought this phone cover without seeing an ad so that's a good insight because people come to the website they suddenly see this phone cover they buy it right because they haven't seen an ad which means this phone cover should have competitive wage that's why people are buying and also there should be a demand in the market that's why people <clears throat> People who came to the website, they, they saw the product, they bought it. So what the summary of it, basically market has a requirement for this phone cover. Since you're not advertising, they don't have way to identify that you, you have this phone cover, right? So that's a gap in the market. So the, what you have to do, identify product with uh, the low ratio, with paid sales to organic sale and advertise them so that you can tell potential customers that okay, you have this phone cover in the website with your uh, product category. So they will come and purchase. Otherwise, what will happen? There could be a short demand in the market. So if com competitor also identify this, if, if he comes with the phone cover, similar phone cover and advertise so that he will get most of the sales, you will lose because you are getting sales from the organic, uh, the visits. So similarly, you can look at the, what are the products selling organically, immediately advertise and capitalize that. And um, this product performance comparison report, uh, what you can do is you go to Google Analytics, go to product performance. Roshan, I believe uh, your audio is stuck. Dinesh, can you take over from here? 
Uh, hi, sorry, I think it got restarted soon. Yeah. Uh, let's go to next slide. So, uh, Dinoshan, can we explain the product performance compensatory report once again because we got stuck? Uh, surely. Okay, yeah. so uh, this is a product uh, performance report. What you can do, you can add the two time period and compare. So here, let's assume we compare this month versus last month. You can see uh, product performance, actually some of the product, first product purchase revenue increased. Second product revenue decreased by 25%. Third product increased by 137%. So this report actually will help you to discover more insight. So next slide, I will show you what type of insight you can discover from this report. And first thing you can see, what are the trending products and decline products for this month or this week? Uh, it will actually help us to actually market product better and the production better. Let's say the best example is that when the summer and winter changes, we can see different products trending and some product actually declines. So based on this trending product, we can actually actively market them. If there's a declining product, we can see whether it's declining because of this winter season or people are not buying it because of the competitor came with a different product. So we can actually go down and analyze that. And uh, if there's an issue, we can rectify. And the second scenario is that you can, um, since this is September, you can go back to last year, September and August, compare last year, September versus August, see what are the product actually peaked in September. So that you can see, you, then you can expect some of the behavior, behavior will be uh, replicated this year as well. So that you can identify those products and try to advertise those products because this year also you can have similar trends. The good example is that uh, in December, normally red dresses are trending because for Christmas, people are buying more red color, the dresses and fashion and apparel. So there could be whole, this is a known insight, but there could be a whole lot of unknown insights, product trends you can discover by comparing different time frames. And um, so now uh, the, in the final stage, we want to discuss about the attribution because this is a common uh, question across uh, the, all the digital marketers because Google Analytics says different reports. If you look at CRM, it'd be different. And uh, if you look at Facebook, it'd be different, right? So this is the analytics scenario. If someone comes from uh, uh, the Google product ads and they visit again, click on a Facebook ad, so they click on an email, and then finally they uh, uh, convert using Google organic. So the Google analytics and uh, uh, Dinesh, shall we go back to the previous? Yeah. If, it, if they uh, convert using Google organic, um, Google analytics, all the credit will give to Google organic channel. So that Google analytic, analytic will show that Facebook does, doesn't work, Google product ads doesn't work, email doesn't work, Google organic works, right? Because it shows the last click. This is similar for CRM as well. If you, if you pull a report from Shopify, WooCommerce, Magento, it will also tell you that Google organic works, your Facebook and email, Google product ads doesn't work. So this is not a good report to look at because you need to give credits to Facebook ad, email and Google product. Because without these channels, you won't get this transaction using alone with Google organic. And um, if you look at the how Facebook attribute works, Facebook consider only the Facebook campaign attribute to the last Facebook click. Here, customer actually click on a Facebook ad first, and second, he convert, uh, click on a remarketing ad, then click on an email, then click on a Google organic, and convert it through a finally Google organic. But Facebook attribute the conversion to last Facebook campaign, which is the Facebook remarketing. So now you can see the difference between Google Analytics and Facebook because Facebook show you one conversion, Google Analytics will show you zero conversion. Sorry, Google Analytic will show you Facebook have zero conversion, but if you open the Facebook, it will show one conversion. So this is the difference. So there's no tracking issue because people are most often mistakenly think that there's a tracking issue between Google Analytics and Facebook. Uh, is the issue with the, the way they track the transaction. And here also we have a one problem. If you uh, look at on the ad manager reports, you will think that oh, your remarketing campaigns are working because all the transaction will attribute your remarketing campaign and the top funnel traffic campaign won't attribute any of the transaction. So that you, can, you can't depend only on using Facebook ad manager reports because it, it also last click. For that, uh, Google Analytics has a separate report called assisted conversion. So uh, next slide, uh, I'll show you that. And the assisted conversion, uh, what you can do, you can add a filter, show me only the Facebook campaign. 
Then you can see here the first campaign, last click transaction, 8,292, and also it assisted 8,829, right? So if you think that, uh, okay, this, uh, if you calculate return on ad spend based on only this last click attribution, you will blindly post this campaign. So the best practice is that you look at the, uh, the Facebook ad manager and uh, look at the number of transaction and ROAs before, let's say it, you, it's not profitable for you, then come back to Google this assisted conversion report, look at whether this, this campaign has assisted conversion. So if this campaign has assisted campaign, uh, conversion, don't post that because by posting this campaign, you are going to uh, uh, reduce significant number of transaction and also your pre-marketing campaign performance also will drop. And the next one, uh, the data-driven attribution. So it, basically the common question is that I advertise on Facebook, I advertise on Google, maybe TikTok, multiple platform. How do I uh, check the profitability, overall profitability? Because Facebook track only uh, track revenue and Google also track revenue. There's an overlap and organic ch channel you can see on Google Analytics, that's also overlap. The solution is that Google Analytics has a data-driven attribution. So it will show all the channel it will show you what is, how many transaction each of these channel attributed. In, in a simple term, <clears throat> you can say, okay, if you remove paid ads, how many transaction you will lose? It will calculate that. Based on that, you can actually check the channel profitability because uh, you can't rely on the uh, Facebook numbers, Google numbers separately to check the overall profitability. Go to Google and set up, the, you have to set up a data-driven attribution view once you set up, you can see this, uh, the numbers with multiple channels. And, uh, okay. And also the one, one of the, the sorry, uh, pre, Dinesh Chali, good, please. One of the experience of the digital marketers, uh, the experience. So whenever we increase the, uh, uh, the budget, uh, let's say we found a profitable campaign when we increase the budget, it won't increase the, the revenue linearly. So sometimes it reduces. The only reason is that in this customer journey, you can see remarketing campaign, it attributed most of the transaction in Facebook, right? So let's say you think that, okay, remarketing campaign is profitable, you double budget, but your revenue won't go up because you need to similarly uh, improve the, your Facebook top funnel ad, email campaign and Google login because without uh, improving the other attributing channel, your revenue not going to go up. So you can't improve, increase a, a single channel and expect the revenue improve significantly. And um, as a solution for that, we can actually go to uh, Google Analytics uh, uh, channel uh, path report. Here the one, it's a basically a hack. You can identify what are the campaign, get most number of transaction without helping of in, any other campaign. Or let's say we, <clears throat> First scenario, uh, the second scenario, the paid search, right? They are only one campaign driving 895 transactions. So if you increase budget for that campaign, there's a high chance you will get linear increment in revenue assets because this channel don't need any support from any other campaign. So this is a goal of mine. So you open this channel report and identify what are the campaign driving conversion without helping from any other campaign so that invest money on this campaign as possible so that you will get better returns quickly. Yeah, so within one hour, we we, we try to uh, um, show as much as possible, right? But we intend to do a few other sessions with, with PES uh, in the coming months. I uh, hope it was uh, useful and uh, both Nirosh and I will be happy to take some questions. Or oh, even feedback would be great too. Dinesh, can we go ahead with the poll right now? Yes. Guys, if you have any question, please ask or leave it in the chat box. Okay, let's do the poll, please, please. Uh, we are doing a very quick poll. Please uh, make sure that you all register your answer.
so the reason we wanted to do this poll was to see the adoption of GA4. And then we intend to uh, do a session uh, 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 in terms of using GA4 and, and uh, pulling out insight. Especially we want, we want to touch, touch upon the, uh, the mobile domain as well. So we should be able to do that in a few months time. Dinesh, we have the results. Can you see them? Yes, yes. I think uh, it, I mean it's good to see. I think we've done this across multiple markets, and we've seen about 25, 30 percent adoption in terms of GA4, which is also uh, somewhat similar, right? So, and I'm I'm sure in the next one or two months uh, there will be more adoption. As of now, GA4 is is not fully out. It's almost like a beta. So we we believe that uh, the adoption will grow over time. And, and and doing a, a, a early session on that would be timely, and I'm, I'm sure it will. It should help the digital marketers. Cool. Uh, any questions? If there aren't any questions, uh, we can edit. Or if you have, we also welcome some feedback from you guys, or any thoughts on, uh, or if, if there are any topics that you like to cover in the upcoming uh, webinars, would be great too. Yes, so I think we should end since there are no questions. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you, Naroshan, once again for doing the webinar. It was an insightful session. We hope to, you know, continue this collaboration in future as well. So all to all the participants, if you have any suggestions for future webinar, please feel free to write to us. And if you have any feedback related to this webinar, please feel free to leave your suggestions. Thank you so much all. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we hope to see you super soon again. Right. Bye Dinesh, bye Naroshan. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Bye.